Oh my god. Oh. If it doesn't puff up, where, where'd you go? He's gonna be in trouble. It's up. See, they're puffing up. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Caesar. Qué bonita tortilla. That's puffed, right? See it? Oh my god. Oh my god. You got it. You got it. Do they collapse? No, not at all. As long as they have enough time to rest. Wow. Quail eggs, quail eggs, quail eggs, quail eggs. Where are they? There they go. Joe, here's the $250,000 question. How is Jerron's big fingers and hands going to peel a quail leg? Yes, he does have big hands. But I told him, think small, think dainty. And I think he's going to make it. Oh God, speed it up. We're down to five minutes to go. This is it, guys. Ashley, this is why she's learned so much from the competition. She's tasting everything. All that sweetness and acidity, she better taste everything, because she's walking a high wire. Is she going to overcook her snapper? No, definitely not overcook the snapper. 90% of that cooking will take place in that skin. So you'll see that crispness, and that will protect the fish and keep it moist. That snapper is so difficult to cook right. You have to get it just right. It could be too dry. I'm yeah. nervous. My one concern with Jaron right now, he spent so long on those quail's eggs. Mm. It's insignificant. Now he's putting dots on the plate, fingerling potatoes. But here is the quail. Yeah. Focus on the quail, get that on the plate first, and then put all your little extras on. Caesar has so much he has to do. He has to break those little infladas, stuff them with his lobster mixture, plate, and he's been known to do very elaborate plating. So with three minutes to go, Caesar has nothing on the plate yet. Nothing. <laughs> Start plating, start plating. Woo, let's go! I just don't think he's gonna finish in time. Not only that, his tortilla shell is hot, his lobster mixture is hot. Is that gonna break the integrity of it? Yeah. Last minute, 60 seconds to go. Come on, guys. 60 seconds, Caesar! Oh, yeah. Come on, Sharon. Let's go! seconds to go! Come on! Come on. Let's go! You got it! You got it! Yes! Come on! Go, 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 go. Let's go! Come on! Come on, Jerron! Let's go, Garnish! There you go! That's right! Go, Ashley! Go. That's right! Ten seconds to go! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, stop! Well done! Well done. Oh, my God. Now, all three of you, please, very carefully, bring your appetizers down to the front. Yeah. Caesar, Ashley, Jerron, these dishes look phenomenal. They're so unique and distinct. You have done us proud, and you've done yourselves proud. Please bring those stunning appetizers into the MasterChef restaurant. The appetizer round sets the bar for my three-course meal. And that's why I wanted to deliver on all cylinders. I'm representing Chef Gordon in this. And I didn't come to play it safe tonight. I really am going in with a lot of technique and a lot of skill set that I want the judges to see with this appetizer. Right, Ashley, please present us your appetizer. Ashley, please describe this dish. Tonight, I've prepared for you a pan-seared red snapper with spicy kunk salad, malanga fritters, and an ahi coconut sauce. This plate has a lot going on. So the first thing we need to see is obviously the star protein of the dish, your snapper. When I cut it open, it should glisten, it should be moist, it should be flaky. We don't want it to be dry. Yes, Joe. If you have not cooked the snapper properly, that would put you significantly behind in this competition. I'm ready. Let's take a look. I have to say, Ashley, this snapper for me is mm -hmm. 
Ashley. I have to say, Ashley, this snapper for me is overcooked and dry. That's a pretty novice mistake to make at this point in the competition. There's an incredible heat component in the fritter. What is that? A uh, scotch bonnet. The heat is very, very aggressive. He took a big risk, but the dish as a whole just reeked of too much ambition. Ashley, I love your courageous nature of cooking. And I'm sorry, my colleagues have very European palates. <laughs> that spice is perfect. It tastes like the sun, it's warm. And the cook on the snapper for me is good. It's, it's right there, it's textbook. Really great job. Thank you. Ashley. Yes, Chef. Um, my fish was cooked beautifully. The seasoning's on point. Fritters, delicious. But there's one issue with this. This coconut sauce, it broke. When you stick that amount of heat on top of a sauce like that, it'll break. So you need to be smart in emulsifying that. And don't let that residual heat from the snapper spoil it. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Next up, the young home cook that I chose to give my apron to, Caesar. So I have a squid ink infladita, which means puff one, filled with lobster. Then I have a dragon fruit pico on the outside, caviar, and a roasted poblano sauce. I'm always marveled by you. I'm inspired by the way that you view Mexican food in particular. My concern, very simply, is that did you put one element too much to overpower all these different flavors? Uh, no, I think everything I chose to go on there complements everything else, and I think I found balance in that plate. Caesar. That corn flavor of the inflada comes out beautifully, and it kind of becomes this little sponge for all that wonderful flavor of the lobster I just dig so much. What I don't like, dragon fruit, it's a very difficult fruit to master, and I think it doesn't belong on this dish. OK. But really impressive. Thank you. I have to say, Caesar, this dish hits the standard of excellence in the plate. Thank you, Jim. The poblano has a nice, smoky richness. What really kind of makes this dish sing is that the lobster is cooked very well and seasoned really well. Excellent job. Very impressive. Thank you. I think MasterChef has just had their first UFL landing. Unidentified flying lobster. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a spaceship, <laughs> a very posh spaceship. But I love the ambition. You've nailed the lobster. Lobster's cooked beautifully sweet. The roasted poblano sauce, the heat, it's just beautifully done. Caviar, big no-no. When you've got that heat, the last thing you want to go is that salty, expensive caviar. OK, sure. But that squid ink in that tortilla, love the flavor. That saltiness from the sea, absolutely incredible. And you've taken it down a route to that very few Mexican chefs would. Great job. Thank you. Good job, Saves. Next up, Jerome. You have a Nashville hot quail with a fangling potato salad and poached quail eggs. The dish is beautiful. It shows your journey. You know, my inspiration for tonight is family. The frying technique is something that my mom taught me. But I wanted to find a way to elevate that to restaurant quality. Jerome, I'm going to take a bite of that quail. It needs to be moist. It needs to be spicy. It needs to be crispy. If all that happens on my palate, you have a dish that could win. Jerome, I've never tasted anything quite like that before. Jerome, I've never tasted anything quite like that before. This is kind of like perfection. The quail meat 
is flavorful. The batter is well seasoned. The spiciness of the Nashville hot sauce is spot on, perfect. There's so many different things going on on this dish, and they're all really well done. My criticism would be perhaps it lacks the cohesiveness of one conceptualized appetizer. If you go down south and you have Nashville hot chicken, your options are a coleslaw or a potato salad. That's exactly what I wanted to provide you guys, a taste of me on a plate. You know, Jerome, I appreciate that. And you are so bound to that tradition that it's been great, and it's got you to here. But now, not everything has to be a strict reference to where you come from anymore. It's time for you to fly. I disagree with you, Joe. I think this is exactly what MasterChef was intended to do, to bring out the best in you with us helping you with technique. So this says so much about your evolution. I think frying is the lost art in the kitchen, and it's a true art, and I think you've done that. Fantastic job. Thank you, Chef. Jaron, I think you've done a great job. Quail's slightly gamey. The coating, delicious. You've elevated a fast food, and you paid respect to your upbringing. I love the dish. Good job. Thank you. So guys, an amazing start. Please head back to the kitchen. Entrees are up next. Wow, come on, what an amazing start. Three stunning appetizers. Whose appetizer had the edge? Caesar's plate had it for me. It took the most risks and it paid the biggest dividends. I agree. I think that's one of these best dishes ever cooked. It pains me to say this, but I think Jaron had the dish for me. Jaron was so masterful with frying that quail. But I feel that he was just always in his box, and the finale would be the perfect moment for him to take off. Now, actually, she may have fell short on the appetizers, but this is a marathon and is not all on one course. Two more courses to go. Let's go get our entrees. All three of you did an incredible job, but that was just the first course. It is time for your entrees. Are you free? Ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Yes, chef. Your 60 minutes starts now. Let's go. This is it. Come on. Amazing. Three of the best appetizers we've ever seen in the history of this competition. Now, we've got to follow suit with an incredible entree. Come on, Jerome! Woo! I'm really interested to see not only the dishes, but the progression of the menu at this sure. point. You don't want to make lateral movements. Each course, take it up another level. Let's do it! For my entree, I'm making a pan-seared guinea hen breast, black-eyed peas, and collard green ragu with a quince cognac sauce. Let's go, babe. I really am focusing on using every part of the guinea hen. I have some ground to make up in this entree round, but what I'm doing is a whole nother level of difficult. So if I pull this off, I'm right back in this game. Oven open. Smells good. Let's go, Caesar. For my entree, I'm making a pan-seared duck breast, charcoal grilled vegetables, and an almond mole. Besides getting the temperature correct on the duck, to try to accomplish mole in 60 minutes is gonna be ludicrous. Done correctly, it's a beautiful texture and flavor profile. Look at what Caesar's doing. A mole normally takes all day. Yeah. In one hour, too ambitious. The thing that could go wrong is that it's not enough time to fully develop all the components. But I'm doing something completely different, and I hope that bodes well for me. Mexico te está viendo! Javon is cruising, I love it. I am making carabinero prawns with heirloom grits, shellfish jus, and crispy shallots. So pretty much a shrimp and grits. Mmm, perfect. That was one of my mom's absolute favorite dishes. What I'm doing tonight is in memory of her. 45 minutes to go, guys. Come on. Stay focused, Javon. Young man, question, how does it feel to be mentored by one of the best restaurateurs anywhere on the planet? You know what? Everybody knows I love Joe. We don't, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Okay. So that, we makes, don't. that makes one of us. <laughs> but you both have one big thing in common. Joe's mum was a massive influence on him. Your mum was a huge influence on you. Always. 
You know, when my mom passed away in the last supper that I had with her, she ordered shrimp and grits. And then so, you know, it's only right for me to elevate a shrimp and grits dish. I live in the South, so I know it. How are you going to elevate to make it something beautiful? You know what, Chef? My presentation has been something that I've worked on constantly in this competition. And so I'm ready to show you guys how much I've grown and how much flavor I can put into a shrimp and grits in such little time. All right. Good luck, young man. You got this. Come on. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Ashley, you know, you're having arguably the best chef in the world yes. mentor you. That's a huge honor. Of course. How has he guided you through this whole competition? He makes me fearless. I feel like I've tried so many new things because of him and getting hit, I've never done before, but I'm using every part, part to the thigh, to the breast, and my collard greens are cooking down. I'm going for it. You picked one of the leanest, the most difficult birds to cook. That guinea hen, yes, when I cut it open, I see a red bloodline, it's undercooked. If I cut the center of it and it's mealy, grainy, and dry, it's overcooked. You are walking on a very, very high wire. Yep. High wire, highest, baby, highest. Good luck. Thank you. 25 minutes remaining. Right, uh, young man, uh, give me a little insight to the dish. What are you cooking? I'm making a pan-seared duck breast, charcoal roasted vegetables, and an almond mole. Wow, he's crazy. Loco. You have a recipe for a 60-minute mole? Working on it. How do you do a mole in an hour? We're, we're, we're baffled. I couldn't go with the traditional mole from Puebla, so I had to pick a different mole based on guajillo peppers and almonds. You have a mentor who's one of the best Mexican chefs anywhere on the planet. He knows you can't fast track a mole in 60 minutes. What are you doing? I chose mole for my entree because doing something this difficult is one way to prove that I'm worthy of the title of America's Next Master Chef. The chefs in Mexico that spend a year making the mole. I, I know. But... You're doing it in 60 <laughs> freaking minutes. I knew going into it was a gamble, and I mean, right now I'm feeling like I might have made a mistake. 60 minute mole, it better be freaking good. Caesar, the chefs in Mexico that spend a year making the mole. I, I know. But You're doing it in 60 <laughs> freaking minutes. 60 minutes. It's ambitious, but if I want this title, those are the kind of moves that I have to make, chef. Mama, what was he doing? Se ve bien. Maravilloso. That's how good he is. You can do it. Hearing my mom and my sisters cry out from the balcony reminds me of why I chose mole to begin with. Woo! I'm here to make my family proud and make myself proud and showcase dishes that represent me and my upbringing and my roots and my home. Good luck, Caesar. Good luck. Thank Thank you, guys. Good luck. Let's go, babe. Let's go, Granny. We are down to the last 10 minutes. Let's go. Stop yapping. There's a lot of steak here. Three really ambitious entrees. Jerome is doing basically elevated shrimp and grits, right? Mm -hmm. Dude, those prawns look amazing. The color is gorgeous. My big question about Jerome's entrees, can you elevate it? Yep. Very few chefs in this country have taken that to the Premier League. But, come on, the last meal with his mum, the dish that she ordered, he's replicating that dish out of respect for her. Talk about somebody that's working with lots of heart. So as she's making a pan-seared guinea hen, and that's going to be set on a puree of black-eyed peas with those incredible collard greens. So she's bringing that French influence into the deep south. Yeah. But guinea hen are wild birds. It's a little bit gamey, a little bit richer, less fat. So difficult protein to cook. Come on, Caesar. Atlantic mailman speed. My big worry tonight for the entrees has to be Caesar. I don't know if that rich, gamey duck breast can be cooked perfectly with a mole that can be done in 60 minutes. Amazing. I believe in him, and there's one guy that moves fast enough to get a mole done. It's that crazy local man right there. And that mole right now from here has the right color. I like the consistency. It looks great. That looks amazing. Amazing. You play me for. Five and a half minutes to go. Let's go, Jerron. Oh, it looks so good. Woo! Oh, Ash. Yes. Looks good, Ash. I'm smelling a burning smell, and I'm not sure where it's coming from. Oh. I peek into my collard greens, and they are burnt. She's doing the collard greens, right? I'm having a panic attack. I can't have any mistakes on the plate like I did in my appetizer round. We're down to four minutes to go, guys. Ashton might be a little behind. Is she redoing it? I think so, it looks like. Come on, come on, come on. She's cooking collard greens twice. Oh, my lord. Come on, Ashley, let's go. You can do it. She's crazy. That's Ashley for you. Oh, my god. Three minutes to go. Woo. This is it, guys. Stop waiting. Come on. 
lady. Come on, babe. Here we go. Ash, you gotta start plating, though. Ashley, come on, girl. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Girl, what are you doing? We don't have time for this. Forget about the green. Start plating. Guys, I don't think Ash is gonna make it. Minutes to go, and she hasn't even finished cooking. Next time. This is it. The world's biggest cooking competition continues. As the three best home cooks in America battle it out over the final two courses. Only one. It's exceptional. Will walk away. I love it. With a quarter of a million dollars. My God. Perfection. And the Master Chef title. The winner is. One potato, two potato.